Hi, my name is Paul Conway and I serve as the Chair of Policy and Global Affairs for the American Association of Kidney Patients. Welcome to our fourth annual Policy Summit. In the first session of our summit, we're focused on opportunities, current emerging policy and legislative issues that impact kidney patients here in Washington, D.C., on Capitol Hill, and in the executive branch. Our first speaker in this session is Dr. Shuvo Roy, who serves as a professor at the University of California, San Francisco. He also serves as one of the co-leads for the Kidney Project, along with Dr. William Fazell of Vanderbilt University. Dr. Roy is a professor in the departments of bioengineering and therapeutics science in the schools of pharmacy and medicine. And he's a leader in innovation and research. He's a good friend of AAKP, and he got to know our friend Brian Hess quite well. It's good to see you, Doc. And one of the first questions I want to throw at you is this. Can you tell us in regard to the Kidney Project, which is a Kidney X Prize winning initiative, how the voice of kidney patients has informed your thinking and your research in terms of an artificial implantable kidney, and why it's important to have an independent kidney voice and patient insights available to you as you develop the artificial implantable kidney? Thank you. Thank you. I distinctly remember meeting Brian that day. He came up to me during a break and expressed his enthusiasm for the kidney project and what it meant to him and other patients. I was specially touched that he appreciated the technical barriers that have to be overcome for the kidney project to become a reality. And the challenges that we must have had to deal with and will continue to deal with. Nonetheless, what I also took away from Brian was his emphasis that the Kidney Project offered hope. Hope for countless patients who have otherwise felt left behind by medical progress and told repeatedly that science will eventually solve kidney disease. He encouraged me and my colleague, Dr. William Fizel, to continue involving patients, letting them know of our plans and share not only the successes, but the challenges. I take that message from Brian very personally. It inspires us at the Kidney Project and makes us realize that we're not doing this just for patients, we're doing this together with patients. And obviously Brian, was a key part of the community and we at the Kidney Project miss him and thank him for all he has done in the, for the community. Thank you very much, Dr. Roy. And one last question for you. We're all excited for you for your Kidney X Prize competition win for the Artificial Implantable Kidney and the Kidney Project. And I'm wondering if you could share with us a couple of updates on that. And then looking on the horizon line, what you see for the next year or two for the Kidney Project and what patients can look forward to in terms of news. Thank you. Sure. So we are very fortunate to have been selected as one of the Kidney X uh, winners in the redesign dialysis competition. That has brought us in contact with patients who understand that the product that we, have, we had proposed for the redesigned dialysis, which is a safer and more convenient system for home dialysis, would be likely a product sooner in the timeline than the artificial kidney that combined both mechanical components and cellular components. So what we've done is bring together uh, partners from industry, the patient community, scientists, to focus on adapting our filter technology for the artificial kidney to building a better home hemodialysis system. Over the coming year or so, we'll move this from research into product development with partners that will help us advance this towards clinical trials. So that's the product we call iHemo, or implantable hemodialysis for doing dialysis at home. Now, in terms of the overall kidney project, which is looking to build an implantable artificial kidney, 
we continue to make progress. However, we were impacted by the pandemic and we, our work did slow down. Luckily, my team and colleagues around the country who partner with me continue to do work so the project did not completely shut down. That's great because with all the challenges that we had over the last year, we were really concerned on if we could keep this going without interruption. The good news is we did not shut down. The not so good news is that we were significantly slowed. So what we're going to do in the next year to two is ramp up our progress and continue towards building the implantable artificial kidney for preclinical testing. Over the last few months, we took an important step that we'll share in the coming months with the community. We're able to take the mechanical filter component and the cellular component, both of which we had shown it in the past as independent separate components, we brought them together into a single unit, basically the architecture of an artificial kidney and did an initial preclinical test successfully. It's still very early, but I'm excited that we had success and we are hopeful that in the coming year or two, we'll advance that work. I look forward to working with the AAKP community to continue advancing our project. We've been very lucky to have a partnership since 2018. And one of the key points that the AAKP community has stressed to me and my colleague, Dr. Fizel, is that don't have to aim for the perfect. Make sure you get something that's good enough for patients and that can get to patients within the decade. So we are hopeful that working together with AAKP Renewing our partnership will let us achieve that reality. Thank you so very much, Dr. Roy. And thank you for remembering our good friend, Brian Hess, and for the memories that you have of him and for the insights that he imparted to you and Dr. Fizell, and how you're making certain that those insights are incorporated in the artificial implantable kidney that will save lives, not only here in America, but across the globe. We appreciate it.